hack. We think that the psychedelic therapies have some promise and potential, but it's in the early phase of the research yet, so we think it's too early to reschedule them. On Triple J. MDMA and magic mushrooms are commonly known as party drugs, but for the last couple of years, studies have shown that they have had a positive effect on treating some mental illness, including depression. So there was a campaign for the body that approves which drugs are safe to be used in Australia to recognise ecstasy and magic mushrooms. But today, the Therapeutic Goods Administration has decided it won't do that. Dr Stephen Bright is here. He's from PRISM, which is a group researching the effects of using these drugs to treat mental illness. Thanks for coming on Hack. Thanks for having me. So the Therapeutic Goods Administration has decided ecstasy, magic mushrooms, drugs in this nature are not legitimate medicines to treat mental illness. What do you think about that decision? It's not surprising because research is still underway demonstrating the efficacy and safety of the medicines and so I suspect that the application might have been made prematurely to reclassify them as medicines. I mean, had the TGA done this, we would have been the first country in the world to acknowledge these drugs as medicines. And why do you think then there was this push to get it approved by the TGA? So there was an application made by an organisation that is running some training and I guess they believed that there was enough evidence existing to get these drugs rescheduled, though we put in a submission providing partial support for the, for the rescheduling, though noted that until we have an accredited training program, so we have enough therapists and psychiatrists trained in this, until we have the support from key stakeholders like the Australian Medical Association and until we have national guidelines on the clinical practice when using these drugs, we're not really ready for them to be medicines just yet. And we need to continue doing the research that we're doing in Australia using these drugs to treat mental illness. Yeah, and that was a major concern by the TGA was that the evidence just isn't there yet for this kind of approval. But, you know, the administration did say that years down the track, this this probably would eventuate and be some kind of treatment that we use in Australia. You're obviously doing a lot of this research. Where is it up to in terms of the benefits for mental health treatment in using ecstasy and mushrooms and so on? Some of the research that we're doing is just that. It's trying to demonstrate that we have the people and infrastructure to do it safely here in Australia and some of the research such as that being done at St Vincent's Hospital in Melbourne is actually extending on the research that's occurring internationally to demonstrate that psilocybin mushrooms for example have efficacy in not only treating people who are diagnosed with end-stage cancer but um, have just been given a cancer diagnosis full stop so that's world first research that's happening here in, in Australia and so I don't see this as a setback, but rather I see it as an opportunity to understand what the TGA requires for us to be able to move forward and see these rolled out as medicines in Australia. Yeah, and there has been evidence here and overseas of these drugs being used to treat things like depression, end-of-life anxiety, as you mentioned, in cancer patients, alcohol and tobacco addiction. How do drugs like MDMA, which are traditionally party drugs, used in this way? What are the benefits that drugs like that can give people in those situations? These are drugs that people are already using recreationally, though a key difference is the setting they're used in. So we're doing it in a very controlled clinical setting with two psychotherapists holding space with a person. And this is done in the context of you know, 18 weeks of psychotherapy where the drug's only administered on three occasions. And the intention in going into that is quite different to the intention you have when you take some ecstasy at a festival, for example. Their intention is to go into the trauma, and MDMA in particular is quite unique in the way that it works in the brain because it dampens the amygdala fear response, so people are able to access some of the trauma that they might not have been able to access before, and it also switches on part of the prefrontal cortex, which allows them to verbalise some of that. And then a, another key part of the therapy 
is uh, integration. So the day after they have an MDMA session or a psilocybin session with cancer patients, they then spend some time integrating that information, which again, if you go to a rave, there's not the intention there to, to treat trauma. And the integration is usually recovering the next day rather than trying to integrate the experience. Right. So you're saying the mindset that you go towards this experience with, you know, not in a party sense, but in, in terms of aiming to treat that trauma actually changes how the drugs work and affect you and your brain, right? Absolutely. My experience having undergone the training for MDMA-assisted psychotherapy was quite surprising. I was really surprised at just how psychedelic some of the effects were for people because of so much time that was spent setting up the setting and you know, ensuring the intention was there, so much so that people were having really powerful psychological experiences that you certainly wouldn't see um, you know, with people using it recreationally. Dr. Stephen Bright, in this, in this report by the Therapeutic Goods Administration today, they've also said that there are still risks to people who do use things like MDMA, hallucinogenic mushrooms and so on to deal with mental illness. What are those risks that you're still seeing? Well, because we're still at the stage of doing clinical research, we screen out people who have a predisposition to schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, certain personality disorders, medical conditions. So there's a suite of uh, medical and psychiatric conditions for which these drugs could harm somebody. And, you know, the TGA has said that eventually... This may be something safe. This may be something that we will use in Australia, but it could be several years down the track. How long do you see this taking? Anywhere between two and five years. I think two, two years is probably a little optimistic and five years might be a little pessimistic, but we really outlined what needs to be done between now and the point in which uh, these become approved medicines. And that includes developing an accredited training program that's accredited with the Royal Australian New Zealand College of Psychiatry. It includes setting up a body with the NHMRC that provides best practice guidelines and identifies patients who should and shouldn't receive these therapies. All right, Dr. Stephen Bright, thanks so much for shedding light on this, which is such an important area of research. Thanks for having me. Hack on Triple J.